<laughs> what a morning, what a morning. And a pleasure to be here in the gardens of Les and Rhonda Shanks in Clarksville. They are a product of Fort Campbell Military Base and Clarksville has so many wonderful residents now. And you've been here in this location 20 years. Yes, ma'am. Well, give us a brief beginning point in what your goals were. What appealed to me was the fact that it was going to be big enough for my dogs to have a place to run. So the first thing we did was put up the fence. When we moved here, there was only two Bradford pairs, and the lightning, of course, took those down right away, thank goodness, because they're so invasive. Yes, and so you began with some foundation trees, didn't you? That you well, here. my my river birches, which I love. Yes, <laughs> but they're very messy. They drop a lot of sticks, but I don't mind because I think they're beautiful. Well, I do you lay my hands on them and I talk to them. You <laughs> had to have shade for sure. Yes, and then you added beauty. I love your sunset redbud trees. Oh, I do too. And I got them on clearance and I saved them. I'm a saver. I want to save everything. And so they were dried out and they looked bad, no leaves, and I brought them home and babied them. Yeah, and that's what. That's and what in I did. your planting of trees, you've added edible fruit, haven't you? Yes, apple trees, and I've added plum trees throughout the years, and cherry trees. I have two cherry trees that have made it. It's obvious that you have a full palette of plants that you are collecting and continue to multiply for sure. And then I met some master gardeners and we all became friends and they would give me plants and then I would grow some and share. And it just started getting to where I can't kill a plant. I'll tell you that. I can't kill a plant. I have to give it to somebody or replant it. So it started growing that way. And then I would go to Lowe's when they had it on clearance and uh, I would buy plants then. And then once I went to Marguerite Oaks' Daylily Farm, <laughs> it was over. I had to have them all. <laughs> Well, it's the beginning of daylily season, and yours has definitely begun. And a beautiful one named Bella Lugosi. Bella, Bella Lugosi, he, the, the vampire guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bella Lugosi, yeah. Well, you, you know, I noticed the color of that, how well it blended with all the pinks. It does, and it's a have. good pod and pollen parent, okay. which I like. And then, you know, there was one up that I think might be Primal's green. Yes. That is, it, it was... It was my favorite for a long time, and I've got it in three or four places. I was kind of stingy at first. Yeah. <laughs> I love how it opens up, and you can just see it from across the yard. Okay, now yeah. that's two of my favorites. One's one of your favorites. Happy Valley. Happy Valley. By Robert Selman, Blue Ridge. Oh. It's just, it just, it's very hardy. It sets pods. It's a great pollinator, but it opens up really big. The foliage is low, the stalks are hard enough to where the dogs don't knock them over when they're chasing baby bunnies and things well, like that. So, I mean, I really like that one. I couldn't help but notice as I walk through your gardens that your daylilies have this substance, this deep, rich green foliage, and your stems are nice and thick, and even the color in your daylily. What are you doing to produce this type of... Daylilies love water and they love fertilizer. And I put the, I believe it's called milagranite. Yes. I yes. put that on there three times, you know, like starting in March, mm -hmm. really. And I put that on there about every two weeks. And then I go with the miracle Grow or Osmocote. I go with either one of those. But see, we have fish. Yes. And all the fish waste, every time he, he does a 10% change on all the ponds every week. So he'll hook up the hose and whoever I think needs something gets it. Uh -huh. So they're babied. They're, you know, from here on to the house, they're really babied. Uh -huh. I mean, they, they're, well, they're I, happy. Yeah, I can tell you this. <laughs> anything that gets 50 hours of your time a week, it, yes, they are babied. Yes, ma'am. And they're loved and they know it. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> I was quite interested that you have an edible sunflower. I do. The leaves are edible. They're especially whenever it's short. I don't recall the name, but I know that it bloom when it blooms it just like a bunch of little sunflowers on it. I noticed a wonderful berry back there and I have to say I've never eaten a gooseberry. They're a little bit sour, but these are called Pixwell. And they're not as sour, but once they start turning pink they sweeten up. Uh -huh. And they're easy to grow. In fact, I've just started babies off of them last year, and I only had two bushes, and now I have like seven. 
and I gave some to a lady that came out here not too long ago. Her husband loves gooseberry pie, and I've offered for her to pick them because I didn't know if I'd have time. <laughs> well, if she doesn't, the birds might. Right? No, they will. Yes. I put nets over the blueberries because I like my blueberries, and okay. I don't want nobody getting them. There is a beautiful echinacea in your garden, also the white one. What is the name? Oh, of that's that? a powwow. Powwow. But we have native Tennessee plants here too. I, I've seen the. <laughs> yup, the purple ones are all the native well, Tennessee. Yes. I was struck by the. You made a tree of life. Uh, I did. Now, what did you use? I used a climbing hydrangea. Once it got up there real good, I just started weeding out all the little leaves so it looked like it was a tree. Excellent. And then I had my husband cut out some little wooden boards and then I just painted it and wrote the names of my husband and my children and myself yeah, on there. I, I loved what you had done with that. But you know, that plant itself sometimes gets a little unruly. So yeah, you've I'm given trying, its boundaries. Yes, you? it has boundaries. Absolutely it does. I <laughs> know. Uh, well, and, and you've also got ponds for the fish and you, do. you grow fish and give them away. I do. That's my husband. He's, he's takes care of the fish. And so, he, yeah, I have to ask permission to feed them yes. because they're his. Yeah. Now you do have verticals in your gardens. But I like what you've accomplished with a, a vine. You have a Dutchman's pipe? Dutchman's pipe vine. It was given to me as a baby years ago by Judy. And she had given me several. Every year she'd give me one and they always died. So I was so excited to get one to live. And now I've gotten several off of that vine. But yeah, I, I like it because it's the, the butterfly. You know, there's only one butterfly that will go to that vine. Yes. They call it the pipe vine butterfly yeah that's a very pretty one so i would like to get some of those in the yard <laughs> uh, something tells me that you will you'll get them you, and i love how when talking to you you're talking about the people that have given you things and how you have shared with other people but let's go back to the beginning you have a love of gardening because someone taught you I followed my grandfather around when I was like less than two years old. And he had like four different properties and they all just had old houses on them, but every one of them had a garden in it. And up until right before he died, he would get down on his knees and dig a weed out of an onion. But I have two things. I have a corn shucker and I have a little tractor seat that he made with an old disc from a tractor. And I take care of those because that's my memories. Now, sometimes, you know, I can hear him what he tells me. His inspiration when, to you. That's use. right, when I'm working. And when I planted corn out in my garden one year, I was really fighting the stalks, trying to pick the corn. And he said, go to the beginning and walk backwards and pick, and they won't do any. So I did, and they didn't scratch me. They didn't, you know, it was like, wow, walk backwards through here. So there's a lot of little things that you can remember that helps you get through. I can see that picture because I've got some corn rows that I'm gonna walk down real soon. Walk so backwards and see if it don't help. Backwards. <laughs> Well, yes. it's been a pleasure to glean from you. Obviously, you are a gardener extraordinaire because if you had a cow and a pig, I'd say you almost have a, a <laughs> suburb, an urban farm. Well, when the city allows it, I probably will, but they'll have names and they'll be pets. Yes, well, it has definitely it. <laughs> begun my beautiful day here with you and your gardens. Oh, thank you so much, Annette. Thank you. I appreciate it. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.